now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's six or it's six oh six out of Cutter Company. I was excited about what comes up at six thirty five. That's why I was getting ahead of myself. Tim Berg is an ad expert on Super Bowl ads. Plus at six forty five, Patrice on Wuka on that Usher halftime show. Although honestly, wasn't it really the Little John Ludicrous halftime show? I mean, that was the best part of the That's whole right. thing. Seven oh five, Joe to Genova. Seven thirty five, Bethany Mandel running for Montgomery County School Board. Eight oh five, Andy Pullen. Apparently, there was a football game amidst everything last night. He'll tell us about the sport part. Eight fifteen, Brent Bozell, and then at eight thirty five. Luke Rosiak. It's Larry O'Connor with big time ludicrous fan <laughs> Julie Gunlock. Good morning. I speak millennial, so I'm okay with, with the halftime show. I do not. I have actually, this is good. You're going to be shocked to learn that I have been to an Usher concert before. Really? Is, I see. With you Patrice? didn't expect that. With Patrice? Not with Patrice, no. No, that's just a vicious rumor. I'm just going to be quiet during that segment. Let you and Patrice go at it. <laughs> All right. That's probably fair. It's six oh seven. Thank you for joining us on this Monday after the Super Bowl. A lot of people take today off. This should be a holiday, shouldn't it? It should be a federal. Holiday. It absolutely should. The heck with election day being a holiday. The day after the Super Bowl should be a holiday. If you're up in Adam, you probably didn't watch the game. Chiefs won overtime. Game winning touchdown. Great drive. Fantastic moment. They cut directly to Taylor Swift to see her celebrate. We're still going to talk about that. I'm just annoyed. I know. They could have they could have just come back a minute later and said, here is what we happened this. a minute ago. We covered this. All right. Alejandro Mayorkas is the Secretary of Homeland Security, and he is facing an impeachment vote. Yes, last week's impeachment vote got defeated, but uh, Steve Scalise, is who back. is the Republican whip, God bless him, thank God, he appears to be free for the moment of any cancer danger as he was getting treatment. He will be back on the floor this week. That vote will happen. You heard that on Friday when uh, my our interview with Representative Luna, Rep. Luna of Florida, said, let me just tell you right now, we all just got word we're doing the impeachment this Again. week now, and, uh, and the vote will go properly. He was asked a very simple question. Do you bear any responsibility for the chaos at the border? No doubt there is gridlock on Congress, but do you bear responsibility for what is happening at the border, what the president himself has called a crisis? It certainly is a crisis, and well, we don't bear responsibility for a broken system, and we're doing a tremendous amount within that broken system. Oh. But fundamentally, fundamentally, Congress is the only one who can fix it. They hate us so much. They hate you. They're laughing at you. They are mocking yes. you. They are rubbing it in your face. They are absolutely shameless. Well, we don't bear responsibility for a broken system. Uh, and uh, Oh, it certainly is a crisis. Really? Because yeah. you've been testifying for right. the last three years under oath saying that the border is secure. There's no crisis at all. Right, right. And, uh, and the idea that they didn't break it. Yeah. That they didn't break it. It was fine under by, under under Trump. Well, and, and again, I want to be clear here because they keep de- you need to hear this so that you call them out. And when you're having a debate with your liberal friend at the office in the cubicle next to you who drives you nuts with his left wing politics or on your Facebook page or wherever, understand what they're doing here. I need your ear to pick up on it every single time. Listen to the question. No doubt there is gridlock on Congress. But do you bear responsibility for what is happening at the border with the president himself? Do you bear responsibility for what's happening at the border, at the border? That means controlling our international border. It means people flooding across legally and illegally. It means the nightmare of millions of people over the last three years crossing into this country, making false claims for asylum, and then sitting and waiting and and doing God knows what in this country. It's all about the border, 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 border. And what is his answer? Well, we don't bear responsibility for a broken system. Broken and broken immigration system. That's right. He goes on to talk about the immigration system. That he, the question is about the border, and he responds on immigration. They do it every single time. Call them on it. We, it would have been nice for her to call of course, them on it. Of, of course. course, there and meet the press and say, whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't ask you about the immigration system. You can have a broken immigration system, but still secure your border. But you're not. You're not securing the border. This has nothing. So you ask them about the border. You accuse them of of being neglectful of the border, and they'll immediately reply with a question that wasn't asked. And don't forget the fix that they want. The fix is 
Amnesty. They want them all amnesty and citizenship and benefits and a voting block. And more permanent. money to bring them in That's faster right. and, That's right. and easier. That's right. More processing. He will be impeached this week, or at least they will vote for the impeachment process, I should say, to move forward. And at the very least, uh, they should have that. It's it's outrageous. But, but I just so hope you hear that. Every single time there is a question about the border, they respond with an answer about immigration. And the two are not the same. They may be connected, but they're not the same. Also, something very important, this is on Jake Tapper's State of the Union. Marco Rubio, senator from Florida, pointed out the fact, because everyone's like, well, these are people that are claiming asylum and they're just waiting to go through the process for asylum. And Marco Rubio rightly points out, this is their pathway to citizenship. This whole idea of asylum is pathway to citizenship. Listen. The bill basically creates an an asylum core. OK, it, it creates a bunch of you know, thousands of bureaucrats, basically agents, uh, asylum agents that would be empowered right at the border to either allow people into the country with an immediate work permit. Today, they got to wait six months. You give them an immediate work permit. You're going to have more people coming. That's a huge magnet. Yes. Or they have the power to immediately release them and grant them asylum which now puts them on a five-year path to citizenship, which is what a lot of Democrats want. They want to turn a bunch of illegal immigrants into voters, into citizens, into voters, in the hopes that those people will then turn around and vote for them in future elections, grateful because they'll know who let them in. That's a huge problem. That doesn't solve the border. It makes it worse. This doesn't provide a path to citizenship for any of these people, just to clarify. But... But, oh, I love the fact-checking. Midtime. And and Marco Rubio will have none of it. Hang on. It raises... Yes, it does. Absolutely, it does. No, no, yes, it does. When you have asylum, you are on a path to citizenship. When you get asylum, you are a year away from a green card and four years away from citizenship. Absolutely, it does. But you said you approved of the asylum the power to grant you asylum, not even a judge. That's right. Thank you, Marco Rubio. Great work there. Thank you. And why would anyone come over the border, go through the process, rather, go through the process of trying to come into this country legally? When if you go over the border, you're given amnesty or you're, you're given asylum and you're immediately on that path. Absolutely. Why? While you're in the country, while you, you can wait here while you're on that path. Yep. Why would we have legal immigration? Right. So meanwhile, that's the secretary of Homeland Security who is lying to your face, lying to meet laughing the press, at you. laughing at you, mocking you, uh, flipping the question from the border to Homeland Security. He will be there will be a vote this week and he will begin the House will begin the impeachment process for Mayorkas. Meanwhile, your Secretary of Defense, the guy who runs the Pentagon, the guy who's in charge of your military, he's in the hospital again. Again. He had to check himself into Walter Reed. And, and by the way, we're supposed to celebrate that he's announced it. Oh, Everyone's nice like, well, him. oh, he, you know, I've heard people in the media, you know, after last month when he went without telling everyone, he is now being fully transparent. It's like, uh, you know well, what? thank you. Uh, obviously, he hasn't been fully to. transparent because yeah. he didn't say anything at his press conference about the fact that there are still lingering issues yes. with his health. So he wasn't fully transparent. He's now, you know, granted you the ability to know that he's now incapacitated. How good of him and gone to into the hospital the rules. with. And obviously, I I don't wish will ill in him, and I, you know, rec- recover properly, step down, resign. We need a full time Secretary of Defense. I'm not sure if you noticed, but we just had five Marines killed in a helicopter crash in California last week. The president, I believe, still has not called their parents. We had three soldiers die in the Middle East. We had had two two SEALs SEALs die on an operation. We've got people in harm's way all around the world who are dying. We need a secretary of defense who's fully capable of doing his job, not from a hospital bed at Walter Reed. It's 615. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live from the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. The world's best diamonds are at Mervis. Save one for her. She'll love you even more. Mervis Diamond Importers. <laughs> Last night, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin transferred to the critical care unit of Walter Reed. After being transported to the hospital earlier in the day, no word as to whether his staffers requested that they keep it low key Mm. with no lights or sirens. Uh, We'll see what the updated situation is. He did transfer his powers to his deputy secretary. Uh, The current bladder issue is not expected to change his anticipated full recovery, we were told in a statement. Uh, Meanwhile, let's not forget that on Thursday... The Justice Department special counsel investigation put out a document saying that they are not going to charge Joe Biden with a criminal offense in 
illegally and willfully keeping classified materials for decades, some of them in a torn-up cardboard box in his garage, because he will be seen by a jury as, quoting now, a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. That's our president. That's our commander-in-chief. Mm. Uh, between him and Lloyd Austin, you know, the chain of command right now for our military is Lloyd Austin, a man who is physically debilitated and in critical care unit in the hospital, and then above him is the commander-in-chief who is, how did I get that? Yes, a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Yeah. I think we deserve better right now. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, the idea, this is terrifying, the idea that he's not fit to say, to stand trial, but he's fit to be in the White House? Yeah. Let me understand this. I'm trying to... And be commander-in-chief of our armed <laughs> forces. Yeah. By the way, it was a remarkable spectacle, and we'll certainly talk to Joe DeGeneva about this at six at 7.05. Not just his... Pre- no, I'm talking about all of the people who were trotted out over the weekend oh, yeah. to defend oh, Biden, right. mm-hmm. but they didn't. They couldn't defend Biden. You know, the, imagine working in the White House or being a surrogate, and your job is to go out there and say, the Bi- President Biden seems fine. He seems absolutely fine to me. You can't do that. So what did they do? They went after the special prosecutor. That's right. They attacked Robert Hur. This was politically motivated. Yes. This was an attack. He's using the power of the Justice Department for political purposes. And I'm like, oh, excuse me. It's your DOJ. And, and, and I've been told that if you go after a special prosecutor oh, right. and claim that they're politically motivated, right. you are subverting the legal system and the Constitution. That this is this is anarchy if yeah. you criticize a special prosecutor for being political. Let's not forget Robert Hur, the man who wrote that. He was an investigator on Robert Mueller's investigation, by the mm-hmm. way. Who, by the way, Robert Mueller, I think it's fair to say, is in fact a, a kindly old man with a failed memory himself. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's about as mentally with it as Joe Biden is, if you remember his appearance before Congress. Uh, but but the tables have turned all of a sudden. When you've got a special prosecutor, remember the Justice Department who attacks your guy, it's okay to go after That's him. right. That's but when right. we went after Robert Mueller, if we're going after Jack Smith right now for a politically motivated attack on oh, Donald yes. Trump, how dare, how dare you? How dare you? Yes. Oh, you remember the Lincoln Project and and uh, what's the group that, that uh, Bill, Bill Crystal has set up? Yeah, American so Principles yeah. Project yes. or something. They actually put out ads celebrating Robert Mueller. What a great man. He's a, he's a retired Marine and an FBI director. And how dare you sully the reputation of a man? He would never do anything political. But both of those same people out there are now trying to slime Robert Hur, yeah. who, by the way, is Asian American. Why, why are they so racist? Right. I think uh, Asians now are uh, white adjacent, though. Yeah, they try a, to keep up. I think it's I think it's fair game now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and... and oh, I just want to point out something, too. Like, like in the same way that Alejandro Mayorkas and everybody for the Biden administration flips the question, when you ask them about the border, they immediately start talking about our immigration system, mm-hmm. two things that are not connected. They may be related, but they're not connected. You saw everybody over the weekend saying, listen, there is nothing wrong with Joe Biden. His age should not be an issue. Age, age, age. Ageism. All they talked yeah. about was age. That his age is fine. There's nothing wrong with his age. By the way, there's the same party who told me that Ronald Reagan at That's right. 71 years old was too old right. for the job. Right. Bob Dole was on the cover of Time magazine in 1996 oh, yes. at the age of 72 saying, is Bob Dole too old for the job? Yes. So first they're lecturing you about talking about Joe Biden's age. But secondly, nobody's talking about Joe Biden's age. We're not criticizing Joe Biden about his age. If Joe Biden were 87 years old and didn't act like his brain was made of what again do you like? Ch- uh, cream of chicken soup. Cream of chicken soup. We've moved on from mashed yeah, potatoes. Yeah, mashed potatoes have more, you know. Yeah. If he, it's not about his age, it's about his ability. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, coming up, Tim Burt is going to join us, talk about the Super Bowl ads, which ones uh, really had the impact and which ones were a big waste of money. And then Patrice Adwuka, our pal, is going to join us, talk about that Usher halftime show. Although, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I could talk about the Usher halftime show on myself, by myself, on my own. I'm looking forward to talking to Patrice. I'm always looking forward to talking to Patrice. We don't, you know, but I mean, ludicrous. He had quite the fro going there, too. He did. And Lil John. Anyway, that's all coming up next. WMAL FM, Woodbridge, Washington, a cumulus media station. Making sense of the news. News Talk 105.9. Now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company.
It's 637 here in your nation's capital. It's O'Connor and Company. Thank you for tuning in letting us be a part of your morning routine. Riding shotgun with you. Coming up at 645, our friend Patrice Amuka is going to join us to talk about the Usher Super Bowl halftime show. 705, Joe DeGeneva is going to just tear up the place, I hope. There's plenty to talk to him about. 735, Bethany Mandel is officially running for Montgomery County School Board. That'll tick off all the right people. <laughs> 805, Andy Pollan from ESPN 630. We'll talk about the actual football game last night, which we haven't spent a whole lot of talk about. 815, Brent Pozell and 835, Luke Rosiak. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Good morning. Do you want a man for president? Well, of course, uh, the day after the Super Bowl, you spent a lot of time talking about the ads that ran, considering it costs, you know, literally a lifetime's fortune to run just a 30 second spot. We're told this 30 second spot for Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s independent presidential campaign costs $7 million. Joining us right now to break it down which money was spent wisely and which ones were, well, you might as well have just, you know, burned the money in the backyard, is Tim Burt. He's an ad and marketing guru. You can get his stuff at marketingwithtim.com. Tim, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hey, great to talk with you both again. Good morning. Listen, we're in Washington, D.C., and we do news talk. That means politics is a big part of it. That's why we started with the Kennedy ad. But I got to say, across the board, it seems like it had a hell of an impact even beyond just the people who are political junkies like we are. It did. It, I, I was going to say, did you guys see the RFK ad and, and the elite with it? Of course <laughs> you did. Uh, if if anybody had never seen a nostalgic harken back to this early 60s, you know, the JFK, you, you, if you weren't alive, then you had to think that's what that ad for JFK probably would have sounded like yeah. and looked like. Yeah. And boy, it just took you right back. I, I thought it was extremely well done. Will that translate to votes for him? I don't know. Now, what it probably will do is get people talking about him and getting to investigate what he stands for. Yeah. And what he doesn't stand for. So, yeah, yeah there, I, think, uh, I think that was a winner. A political observer made the point on the uh, on X that, you know, for $7 million, you just told 100 million football fans who maybe aren't paying a lot of attention to politics that there's a part of the Kennedy family running for president. They may not have even known about it. And you let them know in a way that had nothing to do with policy or anything that's divisive. Just his name is Kennedy. He's running for president. Check him out, which is money pretty well spent, I think. Absolutely. 100 percent agree. Yeah. um, You know, there was one other um, ad about um, anti-Semitism that that was quite emotional. Um, do you think that, I mean, I think some people would say, is this the right format? Is this the right time? Can what I did, tell people real fast yeah. what the ad was? A yeah. little girl and her mom are going to school, and the little girl sees something on the garage. Mom just says, get in the car, we're leaving. The next door neighbor is in the driveway. He sees it, and it's got a swastika and, you know, uh, get out Jews painted on the garage. Mom drives back with the daughter later in the day, and it's been painted oh. over by the next door I'm neighbor. I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, it's a great ad. Yeah. Um, what, do, what did you think of? I mean, that you know, that really is a, a, a something that's on people's minds right now. It is. You know, this, the, it's the StopJewishHate.org, I believe, is the actual uh, the website. Um, th- that has been around for about a year now, okay. and that might be the first time it's been on a platform that big mm. uh, to get people talking about it. Uh, and you know, honestly, you can you can lump that in with the "He Gets Us" ads. Uh, the, the you know, the ads talking about Jesus did this and did that. Um, it's the three, <laughs> three because there were three separate ads. They were so jarring uh, at a time that most people can. You know, we we go there for escapism and lighthearted yeah. fun and whatnot, and all of a sudden here comes this you know this this ton of bricks. <laughs> yeah. you know, now, now that's what gets people talking for sure. Uh, does that translate beyond the game? I think these actually will. So it, 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 look, they, they make an impact. If that was their stated goal of making an impact, get people talking, you win. Yeah. It's were you that simple. Were you surprised, Tim, that no uh, corporation selling whatever product they're selling uh, spent the money it would have cost to get Taylor Swift to be in an ad? <laughs> uh Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> we knew we were, here's the thing. We knew you were going to see her. Right. I mean, that was not that was not an issue. The issue would have was uh, if she had popped up during an ad, 
uh, you would have heard, I think, probably a, a very large groan, a collective moan across the country <laughs> going, can, can we, uh, enough. Like, do right. you not have enough money? Yeah, but what's Stop. funny is an ad is the appropriate place to see her, not, you know, dur- during the middle of a right. game-winning drive. But, but a- Agreed, yeah. agreed. Well, you talk about star power. Nothing can compare to Ben Affleck, uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez, Matt Damon, <laughs> and Tom Brady. But I'll be honest, I mean, it was funny to watch, but it didn't make me want to go get a dozen donuts. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's, there's a part, see, and you bring up a really good point. There's a part at the end of that ad that I don't know that people caught because they may have been laughing, Matt Damon actually, or I think it was Matt Damon, actually said, uh, I don't know, it might have been Ben Affleck, said, listen, bro, they're going to name a coffee after us. Right. Yeah, I did catch up. What is he even talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I'm waiting for Duncan to, to come out and say, hey, here's the new Ben Affleck, uh, Matt Damon, Java, so, right. so, you know, thing. Um, if, if that was a teaser for that, the hell of a teaser. Right. <laughs> if it's not... The, yeah, the, the, like we're, we're just wasting our time here. Yeah, well, it was pretty. It great. was very entertaining. It was pretty great to see Jeremy Renner, um, who had a terrible accident uh, last year, snowplow accident, and he had an almond milk, uh, silk yeah. protein almond milk. He's ad. making himself smoothies, and yes. he's like moving around yeah. and like and, and spinning in the kitchen great. and stuff. You know, I'm going to bring up a very interesting point. Where did you guys watch the game? At home. On what platform? Oh, I oh, watched it on the uh, YouTube TV. Oh, no, I watched it you? regular. Just regular yeah. broadcast? Yeah. yeah. I watched it on Paramount Plus on the app. Hmm. And Look at the, the three the of Silk us. Ad was prom- the Silk ad was promised to be shown because I had talked about it prior. It did not run on Paramount Plus. Hmm. So I did not see this ad. Oh, wow. Yeah, which leads me to think... Uh, how, how much did they separate this stuff out? Yeah. You're like, oh, we're only going to show this on Paramount Plus. That's only going to be on cable. Yeah. Um, so I had not seen, I still have not seen this. <laughs> huh. not. Uh, so I, I hear, I heard it was uh, very good. It so was. I, I can't well. comment on it. All right. All right so, so in the, and by the way, it, was it true that it was 7 million for 30 seconds? Ooh. Yeah. That's just to buy the ad time. Wow. That's not, that's not to get the commercial made. Yeah. That's just to buy the slot. That's not that's to like, it. yeah, the stylist for JLo, right? Wow. I mean, that's right. going to exactly. be even more. Yeah, by the time you're done, you're, you can probably double that. Did we miss it's anything that was a standout, though? Is there anything that, that you thought was really just a killer ad? Microsoft Copilot, Google Pixel 8. I don't know if you saw those. Uh, did you see the Google, the, the Google Pixel one is the one the ad was mostly blurry. Yeah. Did you see this? Yeah, that was well done. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I thought Microsoft Copilot with showing showing people what AI can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was aimed really at Gen Z uh, and, and and younger, but phenomenal, phenomenal ad. I thought Starry was great. If you've never had Starry, uh, it's, a, it's a Sprite alternative. I thought that was, mm. was fun. And I thought the Michael Sarah, the Sarah V was, was good too. <laughs> Um, I'm not in their demo, but it, <laughs> it made it made me it made me sit up and pay attention to it. Marketingwithtim.com is where you can get all the stuff with Tim Burt, a uh, ad and marketing guru, uh, or also the QRmarket.com. Thanks, Tim. Great talking with you as always. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It's 6:45. WMAL traffic and weather every 10 minutes. First on the fives with Jamie Witten in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. Traffic is brought to you by Jiffy Lube. All right, uh, check yourself. It's not 20 years ago, but it did feel like it during the halftime. It it's so funny to see millennials getting nostalgic. Oh, the music <laughs> of my youth. It's I like, heard people saying, I'm old. Right. And I was like, what? This was the Usher halftime show, and it actually was the best part. It was at the very end when he brought out Lil John, and then Ludacris just popped out of nowhere. They finished the number, and it, it was good. I'm going to say it, it dragged a little bit in the middle, in my opinion, but uh, but I, I found it to be quite enjoyable and entertaining as halftime shows go but i was just glad people kept their clothes on <laughs> well i don't know usher took his shirt off at one point That's true. he got very sweaty in fact patrice on wuka is going to give us a more expert opinion on these things because this is the music of your generation patrice what did you think yes good morning guys <laughs> i loved it i go. loved it okay listen I woke up with Lil John saying, yeah, 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 in my head this morning. So you know it stuck. It really uh-huh. did. 
I mean, I, I, I think the halftime show is definitely for the ladies, right? It is Usher, <laughs> gyrating across the stage um, with, with right. so much beautifully curated, curated, <laughs> impeccably mu- uh, mu- music. Um, and, and I understand it. It got a little slow. But listen, he is actually a performer who sings and dances. He did and sing. And doesn't just do like a shuffle. He was singing every single one of his songs. Yeah, but he so- stole like half those moves from Michael Jackson. He literally moonwalked who across cares? the stage. Come on. Yeah, but, but Michael was not gyrating, you know, against <laughs> no. Alicia Keys. So that <laughs> was, that's the difference, right? I mean, it, this is 30 years of music. And I remember his first album because I was in high school at that time. And my way. It was it was it was it was everything that we were listening to. So, you know, he did it. I think it did a great job of trying to start out with a punch. Um, you had that energy at the start. Then you got the slow ballads in the middle for, you know, reminding you of those days when you had your your ups and downs in your relationships. And then you end on a big note. Patrice, with it was a half time. Yeah. I feel like Patrice went to therapy during this. No, session. she's now writing an article for the Rolling Stone. Yeah. I was like, well, I mean, hey, everybody's got confessions. You know, we know what it is. Wow, <laughs> Patrice, nice. Patrice, were you dancing? Were you up dancing? And I everybody? absolutely was. Of course. My husband was sitting there. I was dancing all around him, next to him, beside him, everything else. And then, and then it got slow. And, you know, it just took me back those days. And then I was back up on my feet by the end. So I really, I appreciate appreciated it and I love the costume changes as well and then he he really gave a big shout out to to ATL to the A with having Ludacris having little John there yeah so it was it was a good performance well and people now, forget Usher also is a prolific producer so a yeah. lot a lot of those artists actually he either discovered or helped form their sound he was he's, he is a very very talented musician. What about the roller skates? I oh, uh, I was nervous. Oh, for that was everyone. impressive. I it thought was. someone was going to break their neck, Me too. but but uh, but but it seemed weird. I mean. <laughs> No, it's not. Well, okay. So if you're not into uh, Usher following him over the past, maybe five, four or five years, he's been doing a lot of music on roller skates. I think oh, really? it's, it's yeah. something about um, in ATL, it's maybe very popular. I know there was a, a, music, a CI movie where they were on roller skates and all, all part of kind of like the ATL culture, but he's been doing music on roller skates. Can, so can you please translate ATL yeah, well, for ATL? the uninitiated? I'm I believe uh, it's Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, have you guys not flown on a plane Atlanta. and gone through the hub? Yeah, ATL. Okay. That is awesome. Yeah, we uh, just don't. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I also felt like the roller skates, there was something for everyone because for Gen X, it was like Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hadn't even made that connection. Well, there you go. All right. I was th- yeah. I was hoping for roller derby to break out because it's supposed to be a game, but that's all right. Well, it's it's part of the fun and listen it was not all for the ladies you guys had your end like it ended really masculine did you see his, yes. his outfit change oh, it was absolutely all about it felt very very so, robust and, very, and again and that absolutely. music that 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 music just sort of brings